Welcome to another circuit assembly tutorial. In this video we'll be building a NOT gate or inverter, logical inverter. The way a NOT gate works, we can just look at its input output or truth table. Whenever the input is 0 or low, the output is a 1. And whenever the input is a 1 or high, the output is low. There's the generic sideways triangle with a little circle on the end that symbolizes a NOT gate in some schematics. And the circuit we'll be building, or have built by the end of this video, will look like this one. We'll be using a single NPN transistor is the core component for this NOT gate. And how does it work? What will it function? Once we're finished, is at the moment, we have a low on the input, we have a high on the output. If we push our momentary button, we have a high input and a low output. Simple. NOT gate is a really simple circuit and a simple idea, but it's extremely useful at times. So anytime you need to invert a digital signal high on the output when the input's low, or you want to have anytime the input's high, the output's low. It's extremely useful. Some and in especially in cases of using like motor driver circuits. You can simplify your wiring if you're going to a microcontroller if you just use something as simple as a NOT gate circuit. Let's look at the schematic and then build the circuit. The schematic we'll be using is fairly straightforward. We'll have our input to our NOT gate controlled by a single normally open momentary button. And off of that normally open momentary button, we'll have an indicator LED, a resistor and an LED to indicate what is the current state of our input. When the button is not pushed, the LED is off. When the button is pushed, the LED comes on. Also coming off that momentary button, we'll run down through a 1K to the base of a single NPN transistor. I'm using a 2N2222, but you could just as well use a 2N3904 or a 2N4401 or a BC547, etc. Most any NPN transistor will work with this circuit. You just have to be careful to properly align your collector and emitter on that transistor. Not all 2N2222s will be oriented with a flat side facing to the right, as is the case with the one I'm using. But as long as you get your collector emitter, it'll still conduct even if you flip it around, but it'll very likely get hot and you'll mess up the transistor. So you'll definitely want to make sure you know where your collector and your emitter are on the transistor you're using for this circuit to function properly. But coming from this transistor, the emitter will connect directly to ground and our collector side, which is controlling our output line, this 1K to our output LED, will also be connected to VCC through a 10K. And well, how does this circuit function? When we're not pushing the momentary button, that's just like having an open in the circuit. That transistor's not conducting, so no current can go through the transistor. The only path the current can take, thinking in terms of conventional current at least, is from VCC through the 10K through the 1K, turning on our output LED. So when we don't push the button, our output LED is high. Then when we do push the button to press that momentary button, our in input indicator LED turns on, but also current sent through the 1K to the base of our NPN transistor. That gives current coming from VCC through the 10K a fork in the road. It could take the path through the 1K to the output LED, which a little bit will but very little bit negligible, the more of it will run through, or the lion's share of it will run through the NPN transistor to ground. Remember from my video on constructing an AND gate out of diodes that the simple lay mechanical way to think about it is current is lazy. This is going to take the path of lesser work The most of the current is. Some will still travel through here, but not enough to turn on our output LED that the majority will run through the NPM to ground. So when we push the button, our indicator LED comes on, our transistor conducts, pulls most of the current away from our output indicator LED. It does it so it doesn't turn on. That's how the circuit functions. Let's build it. Setting up our breadboard, all I've done is connected both the power rails, the left and the right, through these two wires. I've added a single momentary button, a normally open momentary button to the board, 
and our NPN transistor. The first thing we'll need is a wire from VCC to the top right hand corner of our momentary button and on the bottom left hand corner of our momentary button we'll need a 1K resistor through an LED with the cathode of that LED pointed toward ground. Use a piece of wire, connect the top right hand corner of our momentary button to the VCC or the power rail. Then we can take a 1K resistor coming off the bottom left hand leg of our momentary button and connect our indicator LED with the cathode facing the ground rail. Just like that. We just took care of our input control and indicator LED. From there we need to run a wire down through a 1K to the base of our NPN transistor. We'll use a piece of wire, connecting it into the same row as the bottom left hand leg of our momentary button. It's in the same row as the resistor in the bottom leg, going down to the base of our transistor. There's the collector of our transistor, there's the emitter, the base is in the middle. On the one that I'm using, the flat side is pointed toward the right of the breadboard, but you'll need to test yours to make sure. In some cases, there are NPN transistors that the base is on the left leg or the base is on the right leg. To figure that out, just a simple way is just take the red probe of your multimeter, start out with the center leg, put it on the center leg, put your multimeter in diode mode, and touch the right leg, write your number down, touch the left leg, write your number down. Whichever has the highest number on your multimeter, that'll be your emitter. The way the NPN transistors are doped, the emitter leg will always have a slightly higher reading in diode mode than the collector leg. That's just a simple way to think about it. But now we have our wire coming down off of our button. We need a 1K to go to the base of our NPN transistor. So 1K. Going to the base of our transistor from our momentary button through the 1K to the base of our transistor. The next thing we can do is collect, connect our emitter directly to ground. Just a piece of wire. There's the emitter of our NPN transistor through a piece of wire to the ground rail. For the final part of our circuit, we need a 10K resistor going to the collector of our transistor going to VCC. VCC, 10K to the collector of our transistor. And between that 10K or on the same line, row in the breadboard as that 10K, we'll need a piece of wire going to 1K to our LED with the cathode of that LED pointed toward ground. Let's take our 10K resistor into the collector alright NPN transistor it's all in the same row this resistor is in the row with the first leg or the collector leg of our transistor this 1K so that you don't get confused is going to the middle leg but there's the 10K going up the breadboard now we'll just need a wire from this 10K to VCC. I'm going to have to move this 10K one slot over for the wire. I just moved it in one to give enough room for the wire. We'll put the wire to VCC. VCC 10K collector of the transistor. And in the same row in the breadboard, we'll need another piece of wire coming off for our output indicator LED. Use a little piece of wire. This is in the same row. Collector of the transistor, 10K, piece of wire. We need, now, I'm using a higher value than 1K because I'm using a high power 
on super bright green LED, but a 1K will work for most any LED you could use. We'll connect this resistor. One leg of it in the wire that we have coming off the collector. And our output LED with the cathode side of the LED. In this case, short legs cathode, long legs the anode. The cathode goes in the ground rail. The anode goes in the same row as this resistor. If we've done everything right, we should now have a NOT gate. Let's hook up some power and see. Hook power up. That's a good sign. Our output is on when our input is off or low. Input low, output high. When we push our button and our input goes high, our output goes low. The hallmark behavior of a NOT gate. Neat. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please consider clicking like and also consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.